Hello everyone and welcome back to another Zero Hour video previewing some of the new content that we are going to be getting with Operation Magna once released. And before you ask, the devs are still working hard on the ferry launch map. We have seen some truly amazing progress but I cannot show you anything yet. All I would say is that I am happy with the progress they are making. They are working very hard to make this update absolutely amazing. So if you can, go on the official Discord, go on the official Facebook or Twitter pages and show your support because they absolutely deserve it. A couple of videos ago I was asked if I could preview the new weapon attachments that we will be getting with Operation Magna. Uh, so obviously the update includes some changes to existing attachments as well, especially the laser sights, so we're gonna be talking about these and then we're gonna be talking about the new sights that we are getting as well as the grips that will be added to the game once the update is live. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with the laser sights and the pressure pads because they're kind of related. Obviously the pressure pad can be used for the flashlights, but we're not going to be talking about this too much in this video. So there was a change made directly based on community feedback. For quite a while, a lot of people have been asking for more realistic and more authentic laser sights, especially the IR sights on how they work and how or when people can actually see them and how they react to the NVGs and so on. And uh, people have been asking for more intuitive controls as well. And that's something that Operation Magna delivers. So once the update is live, the Steiner laser sight will be a pointer type laser sight that everyone can see when switched on, while the IR sight will only be visible if you have NVGs equipped. So in theory, only attackers will be able to see them. So the other change to the Steiner laser sight is that when you have it switched on, it will trigger the ADS style that you get when you have your NVGs equipped. So you can get that special ADS even though you do not have the NVGs equipped. And all you have to do for that is to have the Steiner laser sight equipped on your weapon and switched on. And then when switched off, you get back to the normal ADS and then you can use your scope. Not that the switch is not dynamic, so you have to get in and out of the ADS to update how the operator handles the weapon. So if you switched your Steiner laser sight off while in ADS, you will need to get out of ADS and back in ADS to use your sight. So I realized that with this change, I started using the Steiner laser sight a lot more, especially when I'm trying to clear very tight areas or small rooms and my weapon keeps hitting the walls or the doors I'm trying to open all the time and my character keeps going on high ready all the time. So to avoid that, obviously you ADS, but the problem is that you don't really see much of what's going on around you. So I use the Steiner laser sight, I switch it on and add an ADS and you get your weapon on the side as if you were using your NVGs. So that allows me to see where I am aiming and I can also get a pretty good peripheral vision of my surroundings. So what about the pressure pads? So the pressure pads basically let you automate the activation of your laser sights, whether you're using the Steiner or the AR laser sights, when you're in or out of ADS. So you basically have two versions. You can activate when you're out of ADS or in ADS, and you decide based on what you want to use. So for instance, you know, let's say you want to play it cool with the Steiner laser sight uh, when using hip fire, but then you definitely want to use your scope um, when you want to ADS, right? So what you do is basically you use the pressure pads that will keep the laser sight activated when you're out of ADS. So that's pretty useful for long range weapons and scope like the SCAR with the ACOG so that you know you can use your ACOG when you are long range and then as you get into a room because let's say you're the last person in your team Boom, you can use your hip fire and you have a pretty good way to see where you're aiming. The pressure pads also work with the flashlights, but I don't really see many scenarios in which you would actually find them useful, to be honest. I think most people will use them with the laser sights. Now, let's talk about the scopes and your new sights. The first new sight that the team added is the AT Red Dot. Available on the M4, the MP5, the MAC-10, the Deagle and the Tactical Shotgun. I think the AD Red Dot is supposed to be a 2MOA Red Dot Reflex Sight. 
Depending on the weapon, you get it installed on the rail directly or on the riser mount. I believe that's supposed to be so that you can have your sight installed in an absolute co-witness or a lower uh, one-third co-witness. Maybe someone who knows more about weapons and who is watching the video can confirm that in the comments. But I think it doesn't really matter in Zero Hour since the iron sights are flipped down once the scope is installed. So I don't think you actually see the difference uh, when you have those scopes. I don't really use this one a lot because I find it quite bulky which makes it a little harder for me to aim. I prefer the next sight which is the 83 micro sight. This one is available on the M4, the G36, the tactical shotgun and all three pistols. And again, you have it either installed directly on the rail or on a riser mount. I like this one since it gives me a clear um, horizontal picture and it's not as thick and bulky as the AT red dots so I find it easier to acquire my targets and see what's going on around the target as well as around me. Last but not least the Holosun 406 that you can get on the SCAR, the G36 and the M4. It's not the two times like the ACOG that you have on the SCAR but it has a crosshair that I find pretty useful to be quick and more accurate when acquiring a target at medium range with the M4 or the G36 because it is clear in the center of the site while the others have that thick red dot that makes it a bit harder to be accurate from time to time. It doesn't replace the scar with the ACOG obviously that's the most accurate weapon and uh, scope that you have in the game but it is still pretty useful if you want to use the M4 or the G36 at medium range for some overwatch duty. And then we have the grips. We have them for the M4 and the SCAR. We only have a few for now, but I'm pretty sure we will get a lot more in the future. Grips make your weapon heavier, which will obviously impact your stamina and so on, but they will also make it easier for you to control the weapon recoil. As you can see on the footage, I have the M4 without the grip on the left and with a grip on the right. And I'm trying to control the recoil in the same way. As you can see, there is a lot more recoil without the grip on the left side. It's not too hard for me to control the vertical recoil, but as you can see, the weapon is bouncing around left, right and center a lot more without the grip. Now with the grip on the right side, and that's the CAA vertical grip, which you have available on both the M4 and the SCAR, I only have to worry about the vertical recoil, honestly. Now the interesting thing is that the M4 also has another grip, the UTG grip, which is I believe based on the B25U 45 angled uh, grip. Um, as far as I know, it doesn't really change anything if you use the CAA or the UTG grip. As far as I can tell, the difference is purely cosmetic. I find it interesting though that they gave the M4 this type of grips because I believe they were initially designed for weapons with large mags like machine guns, like the RPKs and the PKPs. So, I mean, who knows, maybe we will get machine guns in the future or maybe drum mags for weapons like the M4. That would be pretty cool. I don't really want to say that I doubt it will happen anymore because I've seen this team adding a lot of stuff that I never thought we would ever see in Zero Hour. So. I'm just gonna wait and get surprised by the devs as per usual and uh, but I think it would be pretty cool if we could get drum mags or machine guns in the future in this game. But anyway we obviously have a couple more attachments that went into the game or that are going to be into the game with Operation Magna but mostly for new weapons especially the Bison and the AS Val so if you haven't watched my previous videos previewing the new weapons that are coming to Zero Hour with Operation Magna. Check the links in the description below and learn more about all the new content that will be coming to the game on August the 24th. And that's it for this preview of the new attachments that will be coming to Zero Hour once Operation Magna has been released. There will obviously be a lot more attachments added to the game in the future. The team will keep adding cool attachments to the game for the different weapons, but this is what we are getting with this update. Personally, I'm a big fan of the grips, the pressure pads, as well as the new 83 macro dots. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and to subscribe to support the channel. Hopefully the next video will be a preview of Fairy Launch. 
one of the two maps getting added to the game with Operation Magna. If you haven't seen my previews of the abandoned hospital, again, check the links in the description below and learn more about this update. But we'll see when we can actually preview this map. Hopefully it's coming soon. But in the meantime, I wish you all an amazing day, evening or night. And I thank you once again for all the support. You guys have been truly amazing so far for watching all of my videos. So thanks again for watching my videos. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.